Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be looking at another episode of Web Dev with Go. So today what we're going to do is we're going to grab the HTML data that we got from our HTML form. And what we're going to do is insert it into our database. So the database we're using is MySQL, and I already showed how to set it all up. So let's just start the video. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and create a simple error page. Our error page is so that let's suppose if the user gives out any invalid credentials, it's just going to redirect us to the error page. So I'm not going to really spend much time on this. I'm just going to type an error page. Invalid creds. Uh, you guys can, you know, add some CSS, make it all pretty and stuff. But uh, I'm not going to do that. All right, now the next thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and make two functions. The two functions we're going to have are so that we can a, check if the users exist in the database, and B, to add the user into our MySQL database. So to do this, just head on over to the main.go file. You guys can also keep this in other files and import them, but for the simplicity of this video, it's just going to be all in one. Now go over here and create a function. So I'm going to call this function add user. So add underscore user. And this function is going to take an is username, that's a string. <clears throat> and it's going to take a password, that is also a string. Alright, and it's going to simply have a boolean. So the boolean is just going to return true or false, and we're going to be using the true or false to dictate whether or not it should redirect or does not redirect. Alright, so first, so we're just going to add the user, right? So the first thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and connect to our database. So to do this, just make db comma error and make a declarative operator and just go SQL dot open. And we're going to just open up our MySQL. Okay, and then we're just going to put in our simple credentials like root, new password, and uh, at TCP and then our, just lo our local host slash mock web. And then the next thing we're just gonna wanna do is just go ahead and run it for any errors. Oh yeah, also I forgot to add two other things. We need to add our, we need to import some libraries otherwise this isn't gonna work. So libraries we need to import our database slash SQL. All right. And Another one you need to import is just the GitHub MySQL driver. I already discussed this in an earlier video, so check that out if you guys don't know what's happening. All right, and now that we have this imported, we can just continue on with the video. So first thing we're gonna do is just try for any errors. So just, you know, go if error is in equal to nil, and just simply, you know, panic the error. Okay, and then the next thing we're just gonna wanna do you just go ahead and insert into the users. So we're just going to go add comma error and declarative operator db dot query since we're making a query, right? And it's just going to be insert into users and it's just going to be the name and the password. All right, and it's just going to have the values. values and it's going to have the values of just two question marks okay and it's just gonna you know comma and then you're just going to put in your two arguments and our arguments are simply just our username our username and what's the other one the and our password password all right uh okay now the next thing we're going to want to do is just simply just you know, uh, A, we're just going to want to check for it, any errors. So to do this, just print it out like that. I'm just going to print out add. The reason why I'm printing it out is just for the sake of debugging. Empty.print line add. All right. And then I'm just going to want to just go ahead and just go defer db.close. All right. And then I just want to go ahead and return true. Also, if you guys want to know what defer db.close does, is that what it does is it runs the entire function and then after running the entire function it just closes it so it's the last thing to do right because we don't want our database to close while it's still running 
Okay, now that that's done, the next thing we're going to want to do is just check to see if the user exists or not. To do this, we're going to use a bit of pointers, but it's nothing too hard. So first thing we want to do is just go ahead and create a function and call this function check users. Function check underscore user. And it's just, you know, I'm just going to copy and paste this. All right, there we go. Yeah, so it's just going to be called check underscore user. And all it's going to do is just, first of all, just go db gamma. You know, I'm just going to, well, crap. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to copy this, and I'm just going to repaste it here. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and create two variables. The first variable is going to be a boolean, which we're going to actually return, right? So that's just going to be exist, right? Var exists bool. And the second one is going to be var query string. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just take the variable query, which is a string, right? And just set that equal to a SQL statement. The SQL statement I want it to be equal to is just like this select exists. And in brackets, just go uh, select name from users where name is equal to slash s and password is equal to slash s. All right, and then right outside of the uh, and then we're just going to end the bracket there. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and put a comma. Or actually, wait, no. The next thing we need to do is just wrap this around in, a, in another bracket. So we have to use the FMT library because what we want to do is just take the variables and throw them into the string, right? So to do this, there's a very good library, right? It's FMT dot... What was it called? FMT dot sprintf. Like, sprintf. Yeah, this is the one. Okay fmt.sprintf and what it's going to do is it's going to take in the our username and our password okay now let's see over here let me just see this out of it oh yeah uh, i forgot to put the brackets there all right uh, that should work now yeah, so it goes select exists, and it just selects the name from the user's table, where the name is equal to s. Oh yeah, and this has to be in single quotes, right? Because the idea is that it's also a string, right? Okay, and then I end the, uh, and then I end it right here, and right after that I place a comma. Yeah, okay, I forgot the comma. That's the problem. Okay, and then what it does is it takes these two like percentage s, and it replaces it with username, and replaces it with password. Now the next thing we're gonna to want to do is just scan, or we're gonna to want to execute query, and then what we're gonna to want to do is just go ahead and scan all the values. So to do this, all I'm gonna do is just make a new variable called row. Okay, and it's what it's going to do is it's gonna go db dot query row, and then it's going to take in the query, right? Because what I'm doing when I do db dot query row, I want that query to run on every single database row. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I just want to scan this row. And all it's doing is, is that it's going to scan it. And what it does is it returns a Boolean, yes or no. And what I want it to do is, is share the same pointer as our query or our exists Boolean. So I'm just going to do exists like so. And now we have, uh, now we have the DB row that's running mapping right to exists. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is okay the next thing we're going to want to do is just run another error now this error is going to be a bit different right so what i need to do is one check if error is in equal to nil okay and i also need to check to see if error is in equal to sql dot error no rows so what this means is is that if there is uh, if there's like some sort of error or if there are no rows inside of our SQL statement, all I'm going to do is just panic error. 
All right, because in a realistic situation, there should be at least one row. I'm also going to print out the row for the sake of debugging purposes once again. All right, now the next thing I'm going to want to do is just go ahead and, you know, type our defer statement to close out the database, db.close, and then simply just return exists. So now it'll simply return yes or, or true or false. Simple as that. All right, so now that we've got these functions up and running, now the next thing we're going to want to do is just go ahead and go into our login user and our signup user and map them to these two functions. So the first function we're going to be mapping is add user. So for add user, what we're going to want to do is, what's it called? Yeah, wait. Here we go, yeah. So for add user, what we're going to want to do is map that to our signup HTML page. So we're going to go over here. All right, and we're going to run an if statement, by the way. Uh, what's it called? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. So if add user, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the username, like the username variable, and grab its string, and then I'm going to grab the password and grab its string. And now all it's going to do is just run it. And if it's true, then all I want to do is go ahead and, yeah, I'm just going to paste this there. So yeah, if this is true, then I'm going to insert it into, and I'm going to redirect them to index.html. However, if this is false, I'm going to want to, you know, do the exact same thing again. All right. And or in fact, you know, I could also just remove that. Yeah. And I'm going to put this in as on error.html. Template dot not declaration found in expected. Okay. Uh, let's just remove this template. And just make a variable called template here. Tem template. There we go. Okay, you know what? Uh, that doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, okay, there we go. So yeah, now I'm going to have index.html and error.html. So what it's doing is it's going to add the user, and if for any case, like, it's false, right? Like, for any case that there's an error, what it's going to do is it's just going to redirect me to error.html. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for check user. All right, so for check user, I'm, uh, in fact, you know, I'm just going to copy off this block of code. All right, paste it. And instead of doing add user, I'm just going to go ahead and do check user. All right, now this should work. Okay, so to run this, simply just go, go run main.go. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out and open this up on my other screen. Uh, okay. So here I am. So yeah, I'm on my sign up page. All right. So yeah, this is my home page, right? And I'm going to first of all sign up, right? So to sign up, I'm going to just go ahead and go Yasa. And I'm going to have a password of 111. And I'm going to click submit. So yeah, I'm in my home page. So let's see if that actually modified inside of our database. So I'm going to open up my MySQL workbench. All right. And I'm going to go into mock web. I'm going to go into tables and I'm going to go into users. And as you can see, we can see Yasa 111. Now, for the final topping of the cake, let's go ahead and go into login page. We're going to go to Yasa, and we're going to go 111, and submit. And as you can see, we are now inside of our home page. So that's how people, and so that's how we process data inside of Golang. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.